Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Take a tip from Bugs Bunny. Don't be left out. Don't miss this chance of a lifetime to get five all-new, brand-new, pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. All yours, if you hurry, for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. This is one of your last chances to hear about it. Keep listening. Andy Anderson was a young man who, with his wife Helen and their little girl Judy, had gone to the Yukon during the first year of the gold rush. Andy's claim, about a mile or so outside of Selkirk, had paid off. And a year later, in the fall, Andy was jubilant as he sat at breakfast with Helen and Judy in their cabin. I just think, Helen, how lucky we've been. When I come back from town, I'll have $10,000 cash in payment for the claim. Oh, it doesn't seem possible, Andy. But you've worked hard wasn't just being lucky. <laughs> well, I could have worked just as hard on a poor claim and had nothing to show for it. Daddy, are we really going back to Seattle? Are we? We sure are, Judy, honey. The last boat for the season leaves for the States the end of this week, and we'll be on it. Oh, incidentally, Helen, Mr. Lewis says he'll give me something extra for my horse, too. Oh, that's fine, Andy. Of course, we can use both the horse and the cabin until we're ready to leave. Oh, there's Nipper one. You come in. Everybody says Nipper is a mixture of all kinds of dogs, but I think he's the best dog in the whole Yukon. <laughs> I don't know how Nipper will get along with a dog team. So far, he's led a lazy life as Judy's pet, but Mr. Lewis is going to try to have him broken to harness this winter. Daddy, what do you mean? We'll be in Seattle, and so will Nipper. No, Judy, Nipper's not going with us. He's included in the sale price of the claim, and the papers have already been signed. Nipper's a large dog, not the kind to take into a big city. Daddy! Nipper's my dog! You said so when you brought him to me. If Nipper doesn't go to Seattle, then, then I don't want to go either. Judy, don't talk to me like that. He's my dog. He didn't have the right to sell him. I won't go anywhere without Nipper. I just won't. Judy ought to be punished for talking like that. Wait, Andy. Helen, you can't let a child talk like that. It's disrespectful. Well, a child has certain rights, Andy. And remember, you did give Nipper to her. You mean to say you think we ought to take that big dog to Seattle with us? I haven't said that at all, Andy. I realize a crowded city isn't the place for a dog like Nipper. But I do think you should have explained to Judy before you made the agreement with Mr. Lewis. Well, nonsense. She's just a child. She'll get over it. I still don't like her show of temper. But if you want to overlook it, all right. As far as I'm concerned, Nipper now belongs to Lewis. Maybe we ought to think it over. Maybe we could manage with Nipper in Seattle. And, well, I feel sure Mr. Lewis would let you have him back if you paid him something. Don't talk foolishly, Helen. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Once we get on the boat, Judy will forget all about Nipper. Well, I, I better get my horse and stop. That afternoon, the cafe in Selkirk was crowded with the usual rough and weather-beaten prospectors who gathered to discuss their past experiences and their future plans in the vast Yukon Territory. 
Many had found gold easily, but more had toiled and sweated with barely enough to pay their keep to show for it. Yet all were genuinely enthusiastic in their congratulations when someone succeeded. Two men sat at a table observing the crowd with unfriendly eyes. Buck Collins and Spike Cooper continually looked for the chance to get what others had worked for. They listened to a conversation a short distance away. Oh, sure glad for you, Andy. Being able to sell your claim and get enough to start you in business back in Seattle. Yeah, I wish I was going on the boat, too. That's all right. You deserve what you got, Andy. Ten thousand, wasn't it? Hey, right. did you hear that, Spike? Yeah, listen. I just sold the deal today and got the cash. In two days, we'll be on board the Yukon Queen sailing back to Seattle. Yeah, I guess your wife is glad to get away from the cold winters up here. <laughs> Tell the truth, so am I. It's getting colder by the minute right now. I bet winter will close in within another week. But we won't be here to suffer through it with the rest of you rubbers. <laughs> All right, Andy. But you know the custom here in the Yukon. When you hit it lucky, the treat's on you for the house. Hey, boy? Yes, sir. I haven't forgotten. That's why I came in. Put in your orders and I'm paid. Step up, everybody. Andy Anderson Street. That young gent has 10000 in cash. Yeah, buggy. I guess we were both thinking the same thing. We could use that 10000 Uh-huh. That's what I mean. You think he's carrying it with him? That's a lot of cash. Maybe he's left it in the bank. Yeah? He's taking the boat day after tomorrow. I doubt if he'd open an account for that short a time. He probably has it in paper money. <laughs> These fool prospectors are all careless with their money anyway. But that would make quite a one. You don't seem to be carrying a bag or anything. They print paper money in big bills, Spike. He could carry 10,000 in big bills in his wallet. Hey, let's go over there and watch when he pays for the treat. All right. It's bulging. And that's a hundred dollar bill he put on the counter. Yeah. Let's get out of here, Buggy. We got something to talk over. Come on. Later, Buck and Spike watched from their hotel window across the street as Andy Anderson left the cafe with two friends. The three men mounted their horses and started down the street. Yeah, there he goes now. Got two others with him. That spoils her plans. It'd be risky trying to waylay three of them. Well, stop worrying. I happen to know young Anderson lives about a mile or so out on the North Trail with his wife and kid. Yeah? We'll ride out there later. And after we make sure his friends have gone on, we'll stop at the cabin and take the cash. Then we'll go on to Indian Creek Landing and catch that last boat. Buck and Spike waited a while, then rode away from town. Shortly after, Sergeant Preston, with his great dog, King, arrived in front of the constable's office in Selkirk. Come on, King. Hello, Jim. Hi there, Sergeant. I didn't expect you in town. Well, I had business in Indian Creek, so after it was settled, I decided to come down here and see how things are going with you. King and I'll take the boat back to Dawson day after tomorrow. I'm sure glad to see you. Pull up a chair. Oh, thanks, Jim. It's getting cold. Should snow soon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hi there, King. Can you put me up at your cabin? Sure I can. I'm glad to have you. I can see where we're going to have a quiet, pleasant evening together for once. <laughs> you can bring me up to date on all the news of the force. We'll go home right now and get a good hot supper. That'll suit me fine, Jim. I guess King's hungry, too. Then let's go. Later, Andy Anderson's two friends left him at his cabin door and rode on toward their own claims a few miles up the trail. Andy entered the cabin after stabling his horse. Helen, I have the money. We're all set. Oh, that's wonderful, Andy. <laughs> it won't take me very long to pack our few belongings. Oh, I don't think I could have endured another winter here in the Yukon. I... What was that? Did you hear it? It was a wolf howl, I guess. The snow's already hit the mountains, and the wolves are coming down into the valleys for food. By the way, where's Judy? Not in bed already. No, she took some supper out to the shed to give to Nipper. Oh, Andy, the poor little thing's broken-hearted about that dog. She sat out there with him all afternoon. Well, she'll have to get over it. 
You've agreed we couldn't take Nipper with us to Seattle. Yes, I know I did, but... Oh, Andy, now that I've seen how hard Judy's taking it, I'm sorry the dog can't go with us. Judy will forget about Nipper when she gets on the boat. I hope so. Well, Andy, you'd better call Judy. That wolf howl's made me nervous. <laughs> Don't worry. Judy's safe enough out there in the shed with Nipper. The wolves don't get too bold until wintertime when the snow and ice makes it hard for them to get food. Well, call her anyway. It's getting dark and supper's almost ready. Maybe you should tell Judy that Nipper can sleep in the cabin tonight, Andy. Just this one. No, not that. I made a rule that Nipper couldn't sleep in here and Judy knows better than to expect me to break it. Oh, Andy, honestly, sometimes I think you'll never understand children at all. I believe in discipline. But not too much of it, dear. Love and understanding can do a great deal more with little children than... When one has a pet she loves as Judy loves Nipper. Oh, forget be... that darn dog, will you? I have more important things to think about. Uh, yes, of course. Well, somebody just rode up outside. I, I wonder who it is. I don't know, but I'll soon find out. Hi there. Come in out of the cold. Right, thanks, mister. We were on our way to Sun The wind sprang up and it got so cold we thought we'd stop in to get warm. We're just about to have supper. Won't you join us? Uh, just a minute. You said you were heading for Selkirk. Yeah. Didn't I see you two sitting in the cafe in town this afternoon? What if we were? Nothing, only I wondered why you lied just now. There's no reason why you... We got a reason, (laughs) Anderson. Uh, We sure have. Hey, what's the idea? Shut up and hand over that wallet you got in your pocket. Oh, Andy, they've come to rob us. Well, they won't get away with it. I'll I'll show you. (laughs) Keep quiet, lady, or you'll get hurt. Now, Spike, you get some cord while I get the wallet. We'll tie them both. Time somebody finds them, we'll be far away with the cash. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Plenty is up, fellas and girls, when Bugs Bunny is face to face with a ghost. It's no Halloween trick either. It's a cowboy ghost out in the wild and woolly west. Does Bugs have a ghost of a chance? Read all about it in Bugs Bunny Meets the Dwarf Ghost. It's just one of five. Yes, I said five handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books that are yours if you act quickly. Yours for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The famous, delicious, nourishing, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Yes, as Bugs Bunny says, hurry, get going. This is one of the last times we can make this offer on the air. You've never seen or read these Bugs Bunny comic books before. You can't get them anywhere else. They're just off the presses, all new. All different. All complete. Yes, every story is complete in each 32-page book. Just think, five different stories, 160 pages of fun, excitement, thrills, mystery adventure. Wow, Doc, what an offer. Bugs Bunny said a mouthful because there's more excitement, more thrills in store for you when you read... Bugs Bunny fights the man from Mars. Bugs Bunny joins the Marines. Bugs Bunny, lion tamer. Bugs Bunny, lost in the frozen north, and plenty more. Yes, we'll send you a set of five different books. And we'll let you know how easy it is to get ten more Bugs Bunny comic books. But this is one of your very last chances to hear about it, so listen carefully. Go to your grocer. Buy a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Then cut off the top of the package. Write your name and address on it and send it along with 15 cents, only one thin dime and a nickel, to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait till it's too late. Do it now. We'll send your complete set of five Bugs Bunny comic books at once. Send only 15 cents in coin, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. In the shed and back of the cabin, little Judy sat beside her dog, Nipper, petting him as he ate the supper she had brought out to him. Oh, they can't. 
can't leave you here, Nipper. I just can't. If you stay here, I want to stay with you. <laughs> Daddy thinks I'll forget you, but I won't ever. I think it's mean they won't let me take you with us to Seattle. <laughs> Shh! Quiet, Nipper. Daddy doesn't like it when you bark or growl. I have to go inside now, but but I'll come back and say goodnight, Nipper. I'll come back, Nipper. Honest. As Judy walked toward the cabin, she shivered in the cold wind. Darkness had settled early. The lamp in the cabin window threw a patch of light on the ground ahead of her. Reaching the window, Judy paused to see if her father was inside. The sight she saw caused her to stand paralyzed with fear. She saw her mother and father tied hand and foot on the floor, and two rough-looking men going toward the door. In another moment, Judy heard them go out. Yeah, it was easy, like I said it would be. <laughs> yeah, I saw that guy pretty hard in the back of the head. He'll be out cold for a long time. And I hope you didn't kill him. I don't want to be hunted for murder. Uh, don't worry. I made sure he's alive. By the time they're found, we'll be far away from here. Come on, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. We gotta go back. What for? They had a kid, remember? A little girl. She must be sleeping in that other room. We gotta find her and tie her up, too. Good thing you thought of it. Let's go back then. Judy turned from the window and fled back toward the shed. We have to get away. We have to get away, Nipper. They'll kill us if they find us. Here, I'll untie you. There. We'll go to town for the police. They'll get those bad men. Oh, we mustn't let them catch us. We mustn't. Come on, Nipper. It was about an hour later when a friend of the Andersons stopped at the cabin to wish them luck. After knocking several times, he opened the door and entered. Holy mackerel. They're both tied and gagged. I'll soon have you undone, Mrs. Anderson. There. Oh, man. Oh, there. They've hurt Andy. Now, take it easy. I'll get him untied, too. I'll help. Who did this, anyway? Two rough men who stopped here about an hour ago. Oh. Andy. Andy, talk to me. Oh, no. It'll be all right. Stole all our cash. We better get the constable right away. I'll get some water and a bandage. Uh, Andy, Judy hasn't come in. It's a good thing she wasn't in the cabin. I guess she fell asleep out in the shed with Nipper. Look, Helen, I'm all right. I don't need that bandage. I'll go get Judy and bring her in. Then I'll go to town with Ned and get the constable. I'm sure sorry this happened, Mrs. Anderson. Just when things were going so good for you. I know. I guess we should be thankful we're still alive. They had guns and... Oh, it was awful, Ned. Oh, poor Andy. He'll take the loss of his money very hard, I know. Can't blame him for that. Losing 10000 is something to worry about. She's gone. Oh. She's out in the shed. Nipper's gone, too. Oh, those men. Do you think Looks they... like it. I told you that mutt wasn't any good, letting them walk in and take Judy away. He probably trotted right along with them. Oh, we've got to do something right away. Ned, you stay here with Helen, will you? Sure. I'll get my horse and ride to town for the constable. It won't take me long. It's only a mile. They've got to find those crooks who took Judy. They just got to. Within the hour, Andy returned with Jim, the constable, and Sergeant Preston and King. So you see, Sergeant, we must find them. Oh, taking the money was bad enough. But to think they take our little girl with them. Are you sure they did, Mrs. Anderson? <laughs> they must have. She's gone, isn't she? Yes, but I was thinking that from what you told me about the dog Nipper, she may Well, have... if you mean Judy may have run away, I... oh, I'm sure you're wrong, Sergeant. She wouldn't do that, I know. We'd better set out after the crooks right now. With King along, we Just should... a minute, Jim. King can pick up their trail, all right. First, I want to be sure about the little girl. Do you have something of hers? Uh, yes. Yes, her rag doll there on the chair. Oh, good. That'll do. Why do you want that, Sergeant? I'll let King sniff this doll so we got Judy's scent. If the cooks brought the girl around in front with them and rode away with her, I'll find out from the way King acts. We'll go out to the shed with you. Come on. A few minutes later, the group stood inside the shed. Preston held out the doll to King and let the big dog sniff it. Then he spoke. <laughs> find her, King. Find her, boy. Come on. Look. He's going behind the shed and off into the timber. Wait a minute. 
What are you looking for? Footprints or perhaps hoof marks, but there aren't any. I do see a faint print of a child's shoe and tracks of a dog. Then they didn't take her. She did run away. Oh, Andy. I'm to blame for that, the way I acted about Blaming Nipper. yourself doesn't do any good, Andy. At least the men didn't find her. You said they came hunting for her. That's right, they did. They decided she was outside somewhere and they went to look. I thought they found her in the shed. I was unconscious at the time. I didn't know about it. Look, Sergeant. Find Judy. Never mind the money. You've got to find Judy. Great day. Wolves. Except the little girl. Oh, Ned, don't think of such a thing. Ned's right. If those wolves get after Judy, we're... You've got to find her, Sergeant. Jim, let's get our horses and we'll trail Judy with King's help. Later we'll come back and pick up the trail of the crooks. All right, let's go. I'm right. coming with you. I'll get my horse. Meantime, little Judy had run with Nipper at her side until she was out of breath. When she stopped to rest, she looked around, frightened. Oh, Nipper. I'm afraid. It's getting dark, and, and this isn't the way to town at all. Oh, but we have to get to the constable. We have to. We'll walk now, but oh, but you stay close to me, Nipper, because I'm awful scared. <laughs> For almost an hour, Judy wandered with Nipper at her side. The sparse timber loomed like threatening dark figures, and the cold wind sent shivers through her small frame. Finally exhausted, Judy sank down in the shelter of a shallow cave at the base of a cliff. Nipper lay down beside her. Then the little girl snuggled against his warm, furry coat and slept. It was Nipper's barking that awakened her. <laughs> Unknown to Judy, the wolf pack was gradually coming closer. Presently, one of them howled nearby. Oh, Nipper, they're close! With a cry, Judy pressed back into the shelter of the cave and hid her face in her arm as Nipper sprang out with a fierce growl to meet the nearest wolf. Meantime, Sergeant Preston with a constable and Andy followed the great dog King on Judy's trail. They had ridden for about half an hour when King, a short distance ahead of them, stood for a moment listening. Hold on, King. Hold on. What is it, King? Wolves! They're fighting! Take it easy, Andy. Wait. It sounded like a dog barking. Come on, get your guns ready. Get up, get up, get up. As the men started forward, King, barking furiously, raced on ahead. The intelligent dog knew that the wolves were battling another dog. In the eerie light of the Yukon night, King's eyes soon made out the scene ahead. Three wolves were moving in to help their leader against Nipper. King rushed into their midst with a challenging growl. In another second, King was beside Nipper, and shoulder to shoulder, the two dogs ripped into the wolves. Nipper tired, but the great dog King was a raging fury. He knew that Nipper was weakening and moved in front of the other dog. He attacked the big wolf leader and sent the beast running away, yelping with pain. Then King turned to the other wolves. He snapped and charged first one, then another. He moved with lightning speed, leaping, charging, and dodging murderous fangs. King held all three at bay until the men came close enough to help with their rifles. One of the wolves fell dead. The others ran. Man alive, look at the damage King did. Look, that one there. It's a dog. It... It's Nipper. Nipper, eh? He's limping a little. Here, fella. Hey, Nipper. Here, boy. Now, oh, Nipper, you've got courage taking on a pack of wolves. King got here just in time, eh, fella? Judy must be around here somewhere if Nipper's here. Judy. Judy. Yes. Oh, Daddy. Judy, Judy. Oh, Daddy, I was so scared. Oh, my girl. The wolves came and Nipper went to fight them. Is she all right? Yes, <laughs> thanks to Nipper. He held the pack off until your dog got here to help. Good thing King did get here. Nipper was about all in. Nipper's all right in King's book, and that makes him all right in mine. Now let's get Judy back to the cabin, and Jim and I'll get after the crooks. Let's go. Come on, all right, Judy, Sergeant. dear. Returning to the cabin, Sergeant Preston and the constable left Andy and Judy there. Then, with King leading the way, they set out on the trail of Buck and Spike. 
It was noon of the next day when they returned to the cabin with the two crooks, whose torn clothing and bruised faces gave evidence that they had resisted arrest and had been captured by the Mounties only after a fierce struggle. All right, right, you two. This mouth, go on inside. Watch them, King. If it hadn't been for King, we wouldn't have overtaken them so soon. We'd have got away if that dog hadn't trailed us. Never mind the talk. Go on in the cabin. All right. You caught them. That's right. Get inside, both of you. Lord, the two men who robbed us. Yes, we know. Here's your wallet, Andy. Golly, thanks, Sarge. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> now we can leave on the boat tomorrow after all. What's the matter with King? He's going into the other room. Nipper and Judy are in there. Judy's packing her things for the trip. Oh, Daddy, you want to see King and Nipper playing together in here. You bring him in here, Judy. You know, Andy, there's nothing nicer than a dog and a child playing happily together. <laughs> Sergeant, if that's your way of telling me I ought to take Nipper along with us, I've already decided to. I'll buy him back from Lewis today. Isn't it wonderful, Sergeant? Nipper's going with us. Yes, it is, Judy. You see, I feel the same way about King as you do about Nipper. We'll get these crooks back to town now, Andy. You and your wife and Judy can come in this afternoon and appear against them. Then we can dispose of the case before you leave the Yukon. We'll be there, Constable. Well, as far as King and I are concerned, this case is closed, isn't it, King? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Bugs Bunny is right. Hurry, hurry, hurry. If you want to get in on a riot of laughs and spine-tingling thrills in the five Bugs Bunny comic books we have for you, this is one of the very last times we can tell you about this sensational offer. Remember, it's made only by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Not one, not two, three, or four, but five Bugs Bunny comic books for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Each book is 32 pages thick, so with five of them, you get 160 pages crammed with action. Each book is a complete story, and they're all stories you've never seen or read before. Yes, we'll send you a complete set of five books, plus full information on how easy it is to get ten more. Send for yours now while there's still time. Send 15 cents in coin, not stamps. That's all, just 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Address your letter to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. I'll repeat that. Send to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the bear trap. I left King to stand guard in Wayne Baxter's cabin to protect Wayne's furs from thieves. As I shoved on, I didn't realize I was leaving King to face danger and death alone. The adventure that followed is one I'll never forget. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker...